society should be prospering the way it's going. Right. It has been taught to us in, in the church is that, you know, only the preacher or whatever. But it's really not supposed to be that way. Because you should be able to give out of your abundance. Absolutely. Right? Right. And you, But you got to think about now, when I say give out of your abundance, I'm talking about giving out of your abundance, out of your overflow. Mm -hmm. So, even if you only have one penny, but you are prospering, you're a prosperous thinker, mm -hmm. that is abundance. Right. So it's not based on a physical, but you give it out of a spiritual place. Okay? When I'm speaking about right. abundance. Amen. And when you can't see beyond the natural, it's difficult to give right. and mm -hmm. see the spiritual benefit of it, you know, uh, which is really interesting to know. Because I always, you know, I think about that. I, I always think about that. And I'm like, this is just not right, you know. If I had to be the attorney in the court, I would be saying to the judge. <laughs> This ain't right, right here. Mm -hmm. Now, either you give me something, give me a plan, give me something so that I can understand this. So show me what is the correct way to do things. And so, when you think about, when he brings those things to your attention, I'm going to put it like that. Mm -hmm. Because uh, <clears throat> when he brings those, those things to your attention, those are the things that God wants you to focus on. If he brings to your attention, like for me, uh, why have people ain't got no money? <laughs> Why are people having such a hard time? Mm -hmm. That for me is my thing. It's like I got problems with that. Right. I got problems with tongue talking poor Christians. Mm -hmm. I got problems with I've always had mm -hmm. problems with it. Um, and so God is is gonna be like, okay, well let me show you why it's like that and what you need to do to fix it because mm -hmm. it's getting on your nerves. Right. And whatever get on your nerves, that's what you God called you to. It. Right. Amen. <laughs> That's where you need to be Amen. working at. In the place where it gets on your nerves. Now, the problem with that, we've always been like, well, what is it that you you want to do or what's God calling you to? And we always hear about, well, God called me to the widow, he called me to the homeless. and But you never get beyond that thought. It's always, well, I know God called me to do this or he called me to do that. But you, you have in your heart what you want to do. But you never put foot to it. You never put action to the thing that you believe that God is calling you to do. And so that is what makes you a sinner. It's when you do not fulfill your destiny that God has placed in your heart. That's what makes you a sinner. Okay? So today I think we're talking about <laughs> laws of transformation. We're still talking about laws. And I want us to understand, there, there's a place in scripture that, I was, that came to my mind. And it was when uh, Jacob was going on a journey. Mm -hmm. And uh, he stopped at a place, I think it was Genesis around 17. He stopped at a point and he had a dream. And in the dream, the angel came in and I believe that's where... Jacob was like, I'm not going to let you go. Is that the one? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to let you go till you bless me. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's where we are. We're not getting off this subject until we get <laughs> what the subject is supposed to get to us. We have a tendency in the church to jump around from this to that to that to that to that. But we are going to be professionals at this. At this particular subject, we're going to talk about it, we're going to be about it, we're going to practice it. And it's important to understand the necessity to do that. Okay? Mm -hmm. So let's go to, I think I want to start at Joshua chapter 1. Okay? I just want to hit that scripture. Uh, Joshua chapter 1, which is... Get these new fashioned Bibles. In Joshua chapter 1, it talks about uh, 
changing of the guards, if you will. There was a changing of the vision. There was a changing of the dream. There was a different... The, the thing about uh, Moses was Moses got you to a point. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, your believing will get you to a point. But then there's got to be a change in the way you believe. Yeah. You got to up it. You got to, you know, bump it up a notch in terms of how you pursue a particular a particular thing. Okay? Yeah. So in Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8, and I'm in the uh, Jewish Bible right now. It says, after the death of Moses, the servant of Adonai, Adonai said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant. Moses, my servant, is dead. So now get up and cross over this Jordan, you and all the people, to the land I'm giving to them, the people of Israel. I'm giving you every place you will step on with the sole of your feet. As I said to Moses, all the land from the desert and the I don't know what that is. To the great river, the Euphrates River, mm -hmm. all the land of the Hittites, and all to the great sea in the west will be your territory. So he's saying, he's giving Joshua a vision. Okay, he's giving him a point. He's saying, okay, this is where I, I'm going to take you. This is where you're going to go. All right? And he says, no one will be able to withstand you as long as you live. Just as I was with Moses, so I'll be with you. I will neither fail you or abandon you. So be strong. Be bold. For you will cause this people to inherit the land I swore to their fathers that I would give them. Only be strong and be very bold in taking care to follow all the Torah, which Moses, my servant, ordered you to follow. Do not turn from it either to the right or to the left. Then you will succeed in wherever you go. Yes, keep this book of the Torah on your lips and meditate on it day and night, so that you will take care to act according to everything written in it. Then your undertakings will prosper and you will succeed. Now, he didn't say, I will prosper you. What he said was, what you do will prosper. Right. He says, what you put your hand to will prosper. But you have to meditate on it. Mm -hmm. You have to mull that over on consistently. you got to do that. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so, those were the instructions that God gave to Joshua. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, also, let's go to, because it does touch on this, so I want to go ahead and look at it. Uh, prodigal son. I believe that's Luke 15. Not quite sure, but I think it's Luke 15. If it's not, it's one of the Gospels, a real fine thing. We're looking at right now that would be Luke uh, chapter 15 chapter 15 verses 11 through 32 and it's talking about the prodigal son okay mm -hmm. in this particular instance but I have here uh, two houses actually I have two houses I guess that was a different message and he said a certain man this is Jesus speaking had two sons and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after that, the young son gathered all together and took the journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a famine in the land and he began to be hungry. And he went and joined himself to citizens. 
of that country and they sent him into his field to feed swine. And he said, and he would fain have his belly and the husk that the swine did eat. And no man gave unto him. So I guess he was hungry. Mm -hmm. And when he came to himself, when he came to himself, when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare? And I'm here perishing in hunger. I would get up and go to my father, and I would say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and am no more worthy to be called a son. Make me as one of the hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, mm -hmm. his father saw him coming, right? Mm -hmm. Had compassion, and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, unto him Father, I have sinned against heaven, and in thy sight, and I'm no more worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet. And bring the fatty calf, kill it, and let us eat and be merry. But this is my son, this, but this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost, and he is found. And they began to be merry. Now, he's outside of the prosperity. Let's just think of it from that standpoint. Mm -hmm. He had gotten outside of prosperity. Mm -hmm. He took all that he had. He went out and spent it, right? And so now he's outside of prosperity. He's outside of the kingdom. He's outside of the will of God. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, his elder son was in the field. And as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked him these things. And he said, well, your brother's back. And so the father said, kill the fatty cow, mm -hmm. you know, and let's have a party. And the brother was angry. And he didn't want to go to the party. Mm -hmm. And his father came out and asked him why. And he said to his father, these many years do I serve you and neither transgress. I didn't, I didn't go outside at all, mm -hmm. right, And at any time. And yet I never gave me a party. I might make merry with my friends, but mm -hmm. as soon as it does, your son comes back, which hath devoured his living with harlots, thou cast him, killed a fat calf for him, or gave him a party, mm -hmm. and said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother had, was dead, and he's now alive, and was lost and now found. Now, in verse 31, I want you to see what father is saying to him. He's saying to him, you're gonna you you're gonna prosper, you're gonna get everything, everything is yours. Mm -hmm. Now the son doesn't see that at this moment. He right. doesn't see it like that. He's allowing his the evil of this world to blind him to the prosperity that his father has given to him. Okay? Mm -hmm. So let's go into this reading and look into this uh we want to talk about this transforming power for men here. And see what the author has to say. Okay? And hopefully I got the pages right today. <laughs> Alright. So, in lesson, in lesson four, where he's talking about man, the inlet and the outlet of divine mind. The possessions of the Father are not in stocks and bonds, but in the divine possibilities that planted in the mind and soul of every man. Mm -hmm. Through the mind of man, ideas are brought mm -hmm. into being. Through the soul of man, God's wealth of love finds its expression. I want you to understand that when we get to the end of this, you're not going to be the same person when we start this conversation. Because it's going to place a demand upon you, a demand upon your person to do something else, to, to be at that higher level, to, to live on that mountain and to stay on that mountain. And don't allow anything to pull you back down from that mountain. I don't care who it is. But you understand, you get focused uh, on what it is that God is going to place within you, okay, to prosper you, all right? Okay, it is well said that the mind is the crucible in which the ideal is transmitted into the real. This process of transformation is the spiritual chemistry we, we must learn before we're ready to work intelligently in the great laboratory of the Father's substance. There's no lack, okay? There's no lack of material. There's there to form what we will 
and we can draw on all its resources according to our purpose. Wealth of consciousness will express itself in wealth manifestation. Wealth of consciousness will express itself in wealth manifestation. Mm -hmm. One of the major problems that we have had is the way things were presented to us. First of all, they were presented to us out of the Bible from a position of poverty. So because we received it as a thing of poverty, we didn't get what we should have gotten out of it. Okay? One who knows principle has certain inner security given to him by understanding the God mind. Our affirmations for the purpose of establishing in our consciousness a broad understanding of the principle of which all life and existence depend. We have to first of all, and I'm getting into what we need to do, but understand God's universal truth. Understand that he created this world before he put anything in it. He created it. He made everything. He put the laws in place that would govern it. And we need to learn how to utilize those laws correctly. We're not going to shout it out. You're not going to be able to shout it out. You're not going to be able to cry it out. You have to be able to stand up as he was talking to Joshua. And he said, you know, you get ready to go into something. All right? But I need you to be strong and I need you to be courageous. Amen. Because I'm not going to leave you. And a lot of times what happens is in the middle of it, we look like we've been left. And so we just don't make it any further. Right. Right. And then what's so bad is we got to start all over again. Right. Okay? But we're not going to do that anymore. Not from today. We're not going to do that. Amen. Okay? Our religion is based on a science in which ideas are related to principle and other ideas in great universal mind that works under mental laws. It is not a new religion nor a religious fad, mm -hmm. but points out the real and true of any religion. Mm -hmm. If you know principle, you are able to know at once. Principle is considered the primary objective that makes it move. All right. Okay? So that is what principle is, the primary objective that makes it move, whatever it is. When you hear about principalities and powers, the objectives, the primary points that make the thing move. Okay? Amen. So if you know principle, you are able to know at once whether a religion is founded on facts or has a basis of man-made ideas. Mm -hmm. See, this is what the Word of God becomes. It is the principal thing. It is the word. It is that truth that we need to know that is going to help us to determine if when you preach in your word, you lie. Mm. If you preach in your word and your word don't prosper me, then there's something wrong with your word. Mm -hmm. All right. Amen. I don't have to say that twice. No, in, order to <laughs> in order to demonstrate principle, you must keep establishing ourselves in certain statements of the law. Mm -hmm. The more often you present your mind a proposition that is logical and true, the stronger becomes that inner feeling of security to you. Mm -hmm. This is all about what you're teaching yourself. This is all about what you're saying to yourself mm -hmm. and getting yourself to believe yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay? The mind of man is built on truth, and clearer your understanding of truth, or the clearer your understanding of truth is, the more substantial your mind becomes. You've got to believe what it is that is coming across to you every time we get here. Mm -hmm. We're not here to just, you know, whoa, 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 whoa. no. That's not why we're here. Right. <laughs> we're trying to get something done. For the kingdom and prove God's word is true. Right. There's a definite and intimate relation between what you call truth and this universal substance of being. When your mind is called into action in your mind by your thinking about it, it lays hold of the substance of the law of attraction. There's that other scary word, mm -hmm. y'all. Or sympathy of thought. Thus, the more you know about God, the more successful you will be in handling your body and your affairs. Mm -hmm. The more you know about God, the healthier you will be. Mm -hmm. And of course, the healthier you are, the happier, more beautiful, and better you will be in every way. Mm -hmm. 
if you know how to take a hold of the universal substance and mold it into your uses, you will be prosperous. All right. Now here's where the problem comes in at. We can't get past out. We can't get past the hallelujah. We have got to understand that when we say to you, find time to meditate on that word. Find the time on a daily to meditate on what is happening. Meditate on God's truth. That's what we got to do. Mm -hmm. And we don't naturally want to do it. So right. you got to make yourself mm -hmm. do it. Right. And you can't hang out with people that don't want to do it. Right. I give you a little time, but you're not getting a lot. Because I got to get there. Okay? Because if I get there, you're going to want to go there. Right. Mind substance enters into every little detail of our daily life, whether we realize it or not. However, to establish yourself in a certain security in the possession and use of universal love, life, intelligence, and substance, you must get a consciousness of it by first mentally seeing the truth. Mm -hmm. First, you got to see it. It's just like anything else. You got to see it first. I was amazed. Um, I saw a picture that Sean had in her phone. In the picture, she was dressed for work. And she had made herself a badge. But she didn't have a job. Mm -hmm. She was still working in another place. Mm -hmm. But she put that out there. And this is what we, you know, when we start talking about working on something, you have to put it out there. Mm -hmm. Like, you want to live somewhere else. Then you need to have a picture of that somewhere. And when people come in your room, well, what's that? That's my picture of where I'm moving. That's my picture of what I'm finna drive. That's mm -hmm. what I'm finna do. That's what's happening for me. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, <laughs> we have things that come in the mail, you know, that say, well, uh, you can get a car for, uh, we'll lend you $20,000 for a car. Mm -hmm. we don't, you, we'll give you a loan. They send checks and they say, uh, just sign the back of the check, right. you know? Uh -huh. And you know what we do with those checks? We put them on the wall. Mm -hmm. We put them on the wall. We put these figures on the wall. Because it's like, oh, wow, I guess my credit's going up because they keep but going up. Right. Bigger, bigger money. <laughs> bigger, bigger money. You know? And, okay. Because you, you want that. You want to, you got to work on that. You have to look at these natural things because they're indicators of what's going on in spirit. Right. You know, you got to look at it like that. Okay? <clears throat> all right. So, all true action is governed by law. Nothing just happens. Right. Nothing just happens. There are no miracles. Mm. There is no such thing as luck. Nothing comes by chance. Hold on, hold on. That's where we was at with, oh, wait a minute, Jesus right. did a whole bunch of miracles. Mm -hmm. What Jesus knew how to do was apply universal law. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay? He knew how to apply the law. It's like if I look at you and you're looking crazy, are you looking crazy, uh, is it a spiritual thing, right? Or do you just straight up got a devil? Right. Mm -hmm. And even if you got a devil, you letting them into your hotel, right? Right? So you have to decide, when I say to you, Felicia, you know, I didn't mean to say it on there, but Felicia, you know, <laughs> that, that, you, it's a demon, right. you know, and you can release that demon, right? right? You can let that go. Right. So there are certain things that Jesus did where he had authority right. over all the elements. He had authority over all the spirits, but because they were looking in the natural, a lot of things appeared to be miracles. That were not necessarily miracles. When Jesus said to uh, the girl, they were saying, well, the girl is asleep. No, the girl is dead. Jesus said, she's not dead. She's, she's asleep. asleep. Mm -hmm. But they're like, you know, oh, no, 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 she's dead. So it was those kinds of things. Now, they are miracles to us, okay? Because in the natural, that's what they would be. But if we were lined up in the spirit and we were these spiritual giants, it would not be a miracle. So there is no such thing when I went to get in the car, the kid's car, mm -hmm. and when I walked to the car, it was a Mercedes truck. Mm -hmm. 
it was like I saw it flashed before me. And I was like, I turned around to Shane. I said, you didn't want a Mercedes truck? She said, I don't know about But it flashed, you know? Right. Those are the kinds of things that happen when you got to get up on this mountain that God wants you on to stop looking at my green fingernail. Hallelujah. Both of y'all. I see. They're like, I'm looking at you. Just put you right. Nothing comes by chance. Right. All happenings are the result of cause and can be explained under the law of cause and effect. Mm -hmm. There is a teaching that appeals to the innate logic of our mind. Yet we sometimes feel like doubting it when we see things happen that have no apparent cause. Like, we'll say, or you'll see on television a show or something, you know, where they do magic or whatever. They say, that can't be possible. That didn't happen. Yet, you just saw it happen. Right. So, you're going against what you can see with your eyes. Your brain did not catch up. These happenings that seem miraculous are controlled by laws that we have not yet learned and result from causes that we have not been able to understand. Mm -hmm. Man does not demonstrate according to the law, but according to his knowledge of the law. And that's why we must seek to learn more, more of it. God is law and God is changeless. If we would bring forth the perfect creation, we must conform to law and unfold in our mind, body, and affairs as a flower unfolds by the principle of innate life, intelligence, and substance. Meaning... What I just got through saying about Jesus. Okay? You have to see it that way. This is all about being educated right. in the elements. And not being afraid to go where no man has gone before. <laughs> <laughs> okay? So, the United States Congress establishes laws that rule the acts of all American citizens. Those who keep the laws are rewarded. By protection of the law. Congress does not see to it that men obey the laws. This is left to the ex executive department of government. The same thing is true of universal law. Mm -hmm. what, so it is in the natural, so, so it is in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay? God has ordained the law, but does not compel us to follow it. You don't have to do it. Mm -hmm. We have free will, and the manner of our doing is left entirely up to us. When we know the law and work with it, we are rewarded by its protection and use, by its protection and use it to our good. If we break universal law, I'm talking universal law now, mm -hmm. we suffer limitations just as a convicted lawbreaker is limited to a cell. We find, we find ourselves in poverty. Mm -hmm. When you break those laws, universal laws, you will find yourself in poverty. You might not be broke, but you're coming closer to the problem. No. The Holy Spirit is an executive official through whom divine mind enforces these laws. The Holy Spirit will lead you into the truth. That's the word. Okay? The Holy Spirit will lead us into truth. Okay. When uh, we do something that we should not do, or we break a universal law, conviction comes. Mm -hmm. Then we try to wait it out. Until conviction passes. <laughs> you can see from the from this consideration that God has bestowed the power of divine mind on every man. That's our gift from God. You are using your you are using your body, mind, and soul to carry out a law that God established as a guide for all creation. Mm -hmm. If you righteously fulfill the mission, you cannot fail. To get the result. If you fail to live in accordance with the law, well, that is your fate. That's your choice. God cannot help if you are not following the law and by it demonstrating health, happiness, prosperity, and all good. Now, I find myself in the last couple of days, I've been busy, 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 busy. Find myself in the last couple of days getting thoughts. And they're not God thoughts. Mm -hmm. And God said, you know what? 
Because you have to continuously fill yourself up with positive truth. Amen. You have to consistently fill yourself up because if you don't, you start. I was like this, your mind was wandering into my past. And like, if I would have done this, mm -hmm. this wouldn't happen this way. If I'd have done that. Where I'm supposed to be here in the present. Right. But if, 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 if my cup is empty, or if my cup is not full, then I am going to be looking to get strength from my own cup. Right. Wow. But if I fill myself up with truth, if I fill myself up with his word, if I fill myself up with reading and getting understanding about this, this way that God wants us to prosper and how he wants us to be, then I will overflow this. And it will flow over and I will be able to get from the overflow of it instead of having to dig into here and become poverty stricken. Because I'm pulling off what is supposed to be given to me. Now when I get over here and I flow over here, then it's like with my mind. My mind is full of stuff it should not have right now. Right. Because it should be full of reading and different things. But I've been busy, so I haven't filled up my mind. Mm -hmm. So because I have not filled up my mind, things have flowed over into my subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. And then they flowed into my subconscious mind where all of these thoughts and feelings and past things are. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when you fill it up here with the good things, then the good things flow into your subconscious mind. Right. All you thinking all the time is good. Right. And you all, all the right. time. Mm -hmm. Okay? So it's important to consistently meditate on the word, read good things. It doesn't have to be the Bible, right. but read good mm -hmm. things, look at good things, mm -hmm. and you will get good things. Mm -hmm. Okay? Amen. Now, this is an example, you know, to help you to know I ain't no deep of wonder. I'm just trying to <laughs> do whatever, you know, you feel what I'm saying. That's good. Okay? Blackstone said that law is the rule of action. So with God's law, if you follow the rules of action, you'll demonstrate truth. You will have all that God has prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. What are the rules of the law? First, God is good. And all his creation is good. Mm -hmm. When you get that firmly fixed in your mind, you are bound to demonstrate good. And nothing but good can come into your world. If you let the thought that there is such a thing as evil and that you are as liable to evil as to good, then you may have conditions that conform to your idea of evil. But remember, evil and evil conditions are not recognized in the God's mind. Right. That's right. If you have thoughts of evil as a reality or as having any power over you, Change your thought your at heart. once and begin to build up brain cells <laughs> that brain never cells. heard about anything but good. Right. And this is where poverty comes in that when you say the devil did it, the devil is, is doing this. You're spending more time on what is considered demonic thought. Nobody cares about the devil and what he's doing right. to the point that you need to discuss it all the time Right, is what I'm saying. Okay? So pray this prayer. Mm -hmm. Add this to your repertoire. I'm a child of the absolute good. Of absolute good. God is good and I'm good. Everything that comes into my life is good and I'm going to have only the good. Establish this consciousness. Now think about this. You're saying this, you're saying this, you're saying this. In this pot and it's got to flow on to the subconscious. Right. Okay? Then when you got the conscious and the subconscious working together, you're a powerful person. Right. You're a powerful person. Amen. But they both see, and that's where that's where we're dealing with. We're dealing with positive everybody went to school I assume. Positive and negative integers. Right. So if you got the positive then this is what the church does. They give you a book of scriptures and they say Say these scriptures. Just keep saying these scriptures, right? But in your subconscious, you got all this garbage. So your it can't flow there. So you never get any result. 
because you can't get a flow. Every now and then you might get a trickle, mm, right. but you won't get a flow because nobody educated you on the subconscious mind, right. which is the file cabinet of your life. Mm. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Where am I? Establish this consciousness and only the good will be attracted to you and your life will be in perpetual joy. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you why this is true. I know it. And that you can prove it to yourself. Just do it. Mm -hmm. That we have to do that on a consistent basis. Right. Um, and think about what I'm saying because you go home this week, do these exercises. Amen. When you get to the end, you'll understand what I'm saying. But do these exercises and think about it. Just go ahead and think. Okay, the trash is in my subconscious. Right. I want to flush out my subconscious mm -hmm. with the trash. Right. Then I got to pour good into this container so it overflows into the other container. Mm -hmm. So if you start right now with the idea of universal and eternal goodness utmost in the high place of your mind, talk only about the good and see with the mind's eye everything and everybody is good, then you will soon be demonstrating all kinds of good. Mm -hmm. Good thoughts will become a habit, and good will manifest itself to you. You will see it everywhere, and people will begin saying to you, I know that man is good and true. I have confidence in that person. He makes me feel goodness of all men. That's the way in which the mind expresses itself through man. It is a law. Those who live, I highlight it, in mm -hmm. accordance with the law will get the desired result. Right. Those who fail to do so will get the opposite result. Mm -hmm. And it's just that simple. Just that simple. The prodigal son mm -hmm. took his inheritance and went into a far country <laughs> where he spent it on riotous living mm -hmm. and came to want. When he returned to his father's house, he was not accused of moral shortcomings as we should expect, or as the church wants you to view it as, mm -hmm. when you go outside and right. you sit in, and then you come back to the church. Mm -mm. That's not what happens. You don't need to be in a place of judgment when you come back into the house of God. Mm -hmm. And most people won't come to church because they right. think they're going to be right. judged, which they will be, when they come back into the church. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay? Instead, the father said, bring forth quickly the best robe and put it on him. Mm -hmm. That was a lesson in good apparel. Mm -hmm. It's a sin to wear poor, poor clothes. Mm -hmm. It's a sin to wear poor clothes. And I'm going to put this out here because we got these Goodwill citizens. Stop going to the Goodwill and getting them dead people's clothes. Them clothes are coming from dead people. You don't know if them people died and they cleaned out the closet and you shopping in the dead man's store. Mm -hmm. That's why that spirit hovers over and it feels depressing when you go in there. Because it's a dead man's store. Now, if you're going in there to buy all the trinkets, just don't buy the clothes. Okay? Don't buy the clothes. Hallelujah. Because <laughs> it's a sin. From now on, you know, it is a sin to wear goodwill clothes. This may seem to some to be rather a sorry way of looking at the teaching of Jesus. But we must be honest. We got to interpret it as he gave it, not as we think it should be. Right. You know, you can't want uh, prosperity and then you don't prosper in what you do have. Right. Mm. You got to prosper in what you already got. Mm -hmm. You got to set yourself up and dress up your temple now. That's you don't right. be like, oh, I'm waiting because Jesus going to bless me. Going to bless you. Mm -hmm. Right. Going to bless you. Mm-mm. That's not how it works. Alright. You see, what God does is add to you. Right. Right. Hallelujah. <clears throat> the next act of the Father was to put a ring on it. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> on the prodigal's finger, another evidence of prosperity. The Father's desire for us is unlimited good. Right. Mm -hmm. Not merely the means of a meager existence. The ring symbolizes unlimited because it's got no end to it. It's right. just a ring, okay? It also represents omnipresence and omnipotence mm -hmm. in the manifest world or the material world. 
when the father gave the ring to the son, he gave him the key to all life activity. Mm -hmm. It's like a, it's like giving you privilege, okay? Mm -hmm. Because you cut yourself off when you go into poverty. Right. You no longer have the key. You no longer have the ring on your finger mm -hmm. when you go into when you go into poverty. Because God don't live there. He don't reside there. Right. And he ain't even coming to get you. Oh, I'm going to say that again. He's not coming to get you in poverty. Right. You got to make a decision to come out. Right. And he will meet you. Place poverty. Okay. Yeah. It was a symbol of his being a son and heir to all the father had. He said, all that is mine is thine. The Father gives us all that He has. Is omnipresence. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Omnipotence. Om omniscience. All love. All substance. When we return to the consciousness of His house of plenty. Mm -hmm. And you got to see it that way. You got to see that God is the ultimate source of good. Right. The ultimate of everything. I can't even overemphasize how good God is. Mm -hmm. When you get into that place of really understanding, you know, all this time I was in this depressive state and that was the devil's design. Right. Now let's not, I don't want you to think that I don't know that the devil exists. Okay? Because I know that he exists. Right. And he runs the church. Because he doesn't have to stay in the church. All you have to do is plant a seed because right. that's the way it works. Right. And then you have a bunch of people that don't prosper. Mm -hmm. They get nothing, you know. They go to church on Sunday or Saturday or whatever, whenever they go to church. And then they still have problems throughout the week because they don't look at what the prophet is saying to them and say, now take this and do this. Right. Until you see change. Mm -hmm. And when you see change, that's just the blade. Right. That's not even, see, and that's where we mess up at, too. Because as soon as you see something happen, oh, you just throwing everything, throw the pocketbook in the air, and we done. God moved, and that was it. We don't go for the whole thing. Right. You know, God moved, that was it. Let's go to the, the next thing. We lost. <laughs> as I said, one well, time, we lost. Let's go there. Put shoes on his feet it was the next step. Feet represent a part of understanding that comes into contact with earthly conditions. Right. Mm -hmm. In the head or upper womb, we have the understanding that contacts spiritual conditions. But when we read scripture, anything about the feet, you may know that refers to our understanding of things in the material world. So here's what God says to Joshua. Wherever you put your feet, mm -hmm. I've given that to you. Right. And so he's saying to Joshua at that time, it was about material things. It was about substance because they had lived in a spiritual frame of mind in that they didn't have a house. They didn't have land. So it was spiritual condition. They were going to spiritually move into something, but they did not yet have it. Now they had someone that was going to show them something tangible. Right. They were going to put their feet upon it. Amen. And that's what has to happen. Right now, all you got is the spirit of it. Okay? But you want to get the whole gambit. You want to get it all. Okay? Hallelujah. Somebody say it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. The next thing the father did for his son, was have a party. Mm -hmm. That's not the way we treat sinners. No, no. We decree punishment for them. We send them to jail, put them in bondage. But the Father gives a party to those who come to prosperity, right. to come into the fold, to come into the understanding. There was another place in Scripture where the Bible talks about they, they had a feast. And he invited everybody to come to the party. Right. And somebody showed up and they weren't dressed. Yeah. And he said, what are you doing here? Dressed like that. Do you know where you at? You know you were in the presence of? Right. And they said, bind this joker up. Throw him out into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth or frustration. Right? Mm -hmm. 
We don't want to be kicked out. None of God's party. Right. He got a party that started already. Mm -hmm. It's called Pentecost. That's the party that's going on right now. Amen. God is coming down on Pentecost Amen. because it's His party, yeah. right. and you're gonna prosper in His party. Right. Okay, make sure you put your Pentecost pin right. in the pot because right. He comes and He sanctifies everything that you put your hands upon. Right. You got to know about His party. The parable is a great lesson on prosperity because it shows the people who are dissipating their substance in sense ways as sinners and eventually fall into consciousness of lack. It also proves that they may become lawful and prosperous again by entering into the Father, entering into the mind of God. When there are so many lessons in the Bible for moral delinquents, there's no need to twist the meaning of this parable to that purpose. Right. It's plain. It's a plain lesson of cause of lack and want. And Jesus expressly states that the youth wasted his substance in a far country, a place where the divine law of plenty was not realized. Right. <laughs> There's a very close relation between riotous living and want. Persons who waste their substance in sensation come to want in both physical and financial ways. If you would make the right use of the divine substance and the divine law, you must come back into the consciousness of the Father and conserve our body substance. Then health and prosperity will become naturally manifest. Talk about health and prosperity. First you prosper. Right. Then you help it. Mm -hmm. Okay? You got to prosper. You got to get into the understanding of how to prosper. And it's not about money. This right. is about your get your mind right. Right. Mm -hmm. Ask the Lord to save you. Accept Jesus. As your personal <laughs> savior. As your savior. You know, a lot of times we think we saved. Right. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. And that's what has to happen. I mean, you know. It's important to get together in and congregate and be around people of a like mind. Right. Because that's how you're going to grow. Right. You have to it's be like around that. people Amen. that are thinking that way. Because if you don't, it's just more difficult. Not impossible, right. but it's just more difficult. You know? I called Sean. She said something the other day. And I was telling her sister, she said, yeah, Sean said whatever. I was like, okay, Rosa Parks. You know, it's like it's <laughs> infectious because they start talking all the time about how to prosper, how things are done, and then even sometimes your negative is dead long. Yeah, right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, come on. You know, at, at that moment, you know. I mean, that's what we're human beings, too. So there is that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. All right, where we at? Because y'all can get me off the page. If we are not resourceful or secure in our use of the one defined substance, we are not secure in anything. Substance is a very important thing in our world. In fact, the foundation of it. Therefore, we should secure, I highlighted this whole paragraph, we should secure in our understanding of it and use it according to God's law. Highlighted this whole one right here too. Then let us enter into the very truth of being and observe the divine law. Let us realize that our Father is always here and we are in a far country. Only when we forget His presence. All right now. We He is constantly giving us just what we will acknowledge and accept under His law. We can take our inheritance and divorce ourselves in consciousness from the Father, but we shall suffer the results, for then we shall not do things in divine wisdom and divine order, and there will be famine All in the right land. Now. Let us rather seek divine mm -hmm. wisdom Amen. to know how to handle our substance, and the law of prosperity will reveal will be revealed to us. To come into this realization, declare with faith. And all assurance, the all-providing God mind is my resource, and I'm secure 
in my prosperity. Mm -hmm. It's a job and somebody got to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Men do not contend. Now this is said primitive men because he was talking about before they had houses. Okay. Primitive men did not contend for the products of nature so long as they could easily pick fruit from the trees and sleep underneath the branches. Right. When they began to live in caves, contention arose over the best places and the strongest were usually the victors. Mm -hmm. Success leads to success. Those who were able to take the best did so and prove the law that whatsoever you have, it shall be given and he, sh and he shall have abundance. Oh, which is that scripture that talks about when you have something and then somebody else has something, he who has will always have and he who says they don't have will always not have. Right. Okay? Amen. This seems at first thought to be an unjust law, uh -huh. but it has always prevailed in the affairs of abundance. Mm -hmm. This seems to, at first thought to be, I just said that, Jesus, the greatest metaphysician, did we talk about the definition of metaphysician right. on yeah. last time? Yeah. Taught it as a divine law and gave it his commendation. He could not have done otherwise. For it is righteous man, it is a righteous law that man shall have what he earns. And that industry, effort, and ability be rewarded and laziness discouraged. So this law operates in every department of being. Those who seek the things that the material realm has to offer usually find them. Mm -hmm. Those who strive for moral excellence usually attain that goal. Right. Those who aspire to spiritual rewards are also rewarded. The law is that we get what we want and work for. Mm -hmm. And all experience and history have proved it. It's a good law. If this law was removed, world progress would cease and the race would become extinct. Right. Where there is no reward for effort, there will be no effort and society will degenerate. We may talk wisely about the inner urge, but when it has no outer field of action, it eventually becomes discouraged and ceases to act. Mm -hmm. When men evolve spiritually to a certain degree, they open up inner faculties that connect them with cosmic mind, and that's just spirit, and attain results that are sometimes so startling that they seem to be miracle workers. What seems miraculous is the action of forces on planes of consciousness not previously understood. When a man releases the powers of his soul, he does marvel in the sight of the material mind, but he has not departed from the law. He's merely functioning in a consciousness that has been sporadically manifested by great men of all ages. Man is greater than all the other creations of God because he has the ability to proceed and to lay hold to ideas mm -hmm. inherent in God. Or It's really about what's God's purpose for you. That's what the God mind is about. What did God bring you here for to this planet? What is it, what duty are you to fulfill? Yeah. What did you get sidelined on? Okay? And through faith, bring them into manifestation. This evolution proceeds by man's laying hold of primal spiritual ideas and expressing them in and through his consciousness. In the exercise of this, of his I am. Now these are the statements that we need to make. I am. And you know, we're taught that. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. But my subconscious don't believe. Right. So I'm having a hard time right. with that. Okay. I'm born again. But my subconscious don't believe it. That's why it's so difficult for people when they are born again to accept that God has forgiven them right. because they got jumped in the subconscious. And that's the purpose of getting it in that first tub so you can, the more you can mush it down, pack it down, and put more in there, it's going to overflow into the subconscious. And then you got a delivered soul. Mm. 
okay? And that's from speaking from my own experience and understanding how things work. And that's how the mind works. And when Jesus said, be changed, it wasn't Jesus, it was one of the apostles, be changed by the renewing of your mind. That your mind has got to change. But when they talk, they talk to you in such parables that without the Holy Spirit cracking it open, you can't get the full of what they were saying. In exercise of his I am identity, man needs to develop certain stabilizing ideas. One of them is continuity or loyalty to truth. In the scriptures and in life, we have many examples of how love sticks to the thing on which it has set its mind. How many, you know, how many, I'm going to get that, I'm going to get that guy, I'm going to get that house, I'm going to get that car, I'm going to get that dress, I'm going to get that suit, I'm going to get that. You put your eye on it, you will get it. You understand? Mm -hmm. But this is the thing, you're not putting your eye on enough stuff. Oh. You're not putting your eye on enough stuff. Mm. You have to, this is how you've got to exercise the mind. You have to practice. You're not going to just, okay, I'm getting that house. But you haven't even believed for a pencil. You have to put your eye upon things and practice and see those things come into being. Okay? Mm -hmm. It could be, you know what, I want a steak dinner. Say it. And let the universe bring that to you. Mm -hmm. Not, oh, I'm going to make my own steak. No. Lord, I would like a steak dinner. And don't get off it. Stay right there if that's what you want. You want to exercise the mind. It's like, uh, which, what movie was that? Where the man, mind got big and rocked the bus. <laughs> trying to think. There's so many of these Marvel <laughs> movies. I see it real clear. Green Lantern. In the Green Lantern movie, mm -hmm. the guy's brain was so big it was about to bust out his head. Wow. Kind of like this hairdo. Okay? <laughs> That is busting out because it's getting so much information. Mm -hmm. right. But if but you gotta let that flush out the the negatives yeah, that are so in right. the subconscious. Because okay. the subconscious contains all the experiences mm -hmm. of your life. Right. All of them. Every bad thing, mm -hmm. every good thing, it's all there. And you can't be this new creature until you get rid of that stuff. Enough. Now that negative thing was trying to come up, but you cast it down. Yep. You, just, you have to have the good there to combat those evil parts. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to be through shortly. Hold on. Nothing so tends to stabilize. I did that, right? Yeah. Moving on. Okay. Next two. I got them highlighted. When you first begin to think of God... As everywhere present mm -hmm. substance, your mind will not adhere continuously to that idea. Mm -hmm. Okay? You don't believe that at first. Right. You will drop your attention after a while and think, I haven't enough to meet all our bills. Mm -hmm. Then you will have, see, this is what he's saying is that, you know, my God will supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And you say that for a couple of days till the electric bill comes and then you ain't got no money. Right. And you're saying, well, how is this going to happen? Mm -hmm. When they said, my God shall supply all my need. Right. And in your subconscious, fear comes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay? And you start doing things that you should not do mm -hmm. to make that thing happen. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me? Hearing. And these are the things. I mean, we we beyond that now. I'm preaching to the choir. I love preaching to the choir. <laughs> you know. <laughs> All right. Then you will have made a break and have lost momentum on your ongoing, and you must patch up quickly and affirm. I'm not going to be led astray. And see, this is what happens. We have to learn that when that comes, fight. Right. Fight. That's what the Bible talks about. Fighting. The good fight. Well, I'm fighting the good fight of faith for a reason, right. for a purpose. Because I need to get to this prosperous land that God promised me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus. The old 
ideas are error and they are nothing. Right. They have no power over me. Amen. I'm going to stick to this preposition. God is love, the substance of my supply. God is the substance of my supply. Even right. if money does not show up at that moment right. God to is meet my your need, God is still the source of your supply. Amen. My husband says it this way. Even in the midst of defeat, defeat mm. you're still victorious. Yep. Amen. You are still victorious. And you, you have to that. see it that way. You mm. have to see your life that way no matter what's happening. Amen. You have to see it. No matter what people say, you have to see your life as victorious. Amen. Even in the presence of apparent defeat. Mm. Ruth, Amen. the Moabitish woman, became so attached to Naomi, I highlighted that whole thing, mm -hmm. that she would not leave her, <laughs> but accompany her back to Palestine. Right. She was loyal and steadfast because of her love. What was the result of her stick to itiveness? She was a gleaner. Then became the wife of a very rich man and was immoralized as one of the ancestors of David. Mm -hmm. What's so amazing is, so are you. See, so you need to look at your kingship, you know, look at your lineage. You are so attached to kings all the way, if you just go, you're so entwined with kings. Mm -hmm. Okay? What tribe are you attached to? When okay. tribe was they? Right. Mm -hmm. Tribe of tribe. Is that true? Is that going to be? <laughs> 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 yeah. Wait, wait, wait. What tribe is that? You know? Mm -hmm. You have a tribe. Mm -hmm. And you you see that. You see yourself a part of, of that tribe. Was it Judah? Judah. Judah. If you're yeah. a part of the tribe of Judah. Right? Mm -hmm. and you, you know about your cousins. Right. All in one. And stop, you know, praying for Israel as if you're not Israel. Right. Okay. This lesson of of abiding in our highest ideals is one that must we must understand. Nothing is important to sticking to the idea and never giving yeah. up the work we have set out to accomplish. Right. Affirm the law continuously and be loyal to it, and you will become successful in its demonstration. Yeah. You have doubtless found there is a spiritual law that brings into manifestation the thoughts we concentrate our attention on, a divine universal law of mind activity that is unfailing. Highlighted this. Some adverse condition of your own thought has prevented a full demonstration. Highlighted that one. Mm -hmm. Do not let this swerve you from your loyalty to the law. Mm -hmm. You may seem to attain results very slowly. But that is the best reason for sticking closely to your ideal, not changing your mind. Mm -hmm. Be loyal to the principle, and the adverse condition will break up. All right. Then the true light will come, and the visible substance you have been faithfully affirming will begin to reveal itself to you in all its fullness. Mm -hmm. Now, did it say? <laughs> I got that on your eyes there. Uh, I got a note down here that says, uh, get here. <laughs> okay. That's so funny. It says, get here. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, let me get there. Amen. All right? Because it says, get, get here. Hurry up and get here. Mm -hmm. Then that's at Matthew 17. It says, get here. <laughs> Have it say, man. Amen. <laughs> Glory. Matthew 17, verse 1 says, And after six days, Jesus takes Peter, James, and John, his brother, and brings them into a high mountain. Okay? First thing, your mind got to be elevated. Mm -hmm. 
You got to take yourself to that higher place. Even if, if you're sitting in the midst of negativity, you don't have to agree with it. Right. Take yourself to a higher place. Right? And was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto him Moses and Elijah, talking with him. Then answered Peter and said, Jesus, Lord, is it good for us to be here? If thou wilt let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Which means, what feast was that, Sean? That was Feast of Booths. If they desired to make a tabernacle for them, then it was a feast going on. It was Feast of Booths, Matthew 17. Okay? While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Mm -hmm. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and they were afraid. Okay? Mm -hmm. This is what has to happen. People got to be afraid of you. Wow. They got to be afraid of you. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're going to become such a presence in the life of people. That when you walk into their presence, they're going to know. Now, I know people say, oh, there's something different about you. But it's really going to be something different about you. Okay? Jesus stressed the idea that God has made abundant provision for all his children, mm -hmm. even to the birds of the air and the lilies of the field. The Lord has clothed you with substance as gloriously as he did Solomon. But you must have faith in his all-providing substance of good, and by your continuity of imagination, set it to forming the things you desire. Mm -hmm. right. If you are persistent in working this idea in your conscious mind, it will eventually drop into your subconscious mind and continue to work there where things take form and become manifest. Invisible substance, when your subconscious becomes filled with it to the overflowing point, will ooze out, mm -hmm. wow. as it were, into all your affairs. Mm -hmm. This is why you want the subconscious to get the messages that are coming from the conscious, that right there. You want it, the subconscious to get it, because then you'll start acting like that. You start moving like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. You got two levels of brain activity. Right. right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they're gonna agree and walk together. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's how it's going to walk. You will become more prosperous and successful so gradually, simple, and naturally that you will not realize that it is derived from a divine source and in answer to your prayers. Yeah. So here's what God wants us to do. And this is what he's saying. Right here. You hear the spirit of God saying, your mind be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind has got to change. You got to be on that higher level in your thinking Amen. at all times. Amen. Get yourself a prosperity. Write this down. This is good right here. Y'all, get yourself a prosperity project. Amen. You must realize all the while, however, that whatever you put as seed into the subconscious soil will eventually bring forth after its kind. And we must exercise the greatest caution so that we do not think or talk about insufficiency right. or allow others to talk to us about it. Mm -hmm. As we sow in mind, so shall we reap in manifestation. All right. Some of our well-meaning friends have a way of loading us up with hard times. Mm -hmm. Ideas that disperse this prosperity substance that we have accumulated. Right. 
sometimes even one adverse thought will cause it to escape. Uh -huh. This is so. Uh -huh. This is such a powerful uh -huh. section right. that we need to talk about it all the way through. Right. It is so powerful to us, mm -hmm. you know. And it's going to be inventive to you. It's going to cause you to be inventive. It's going to cause you to be braver. Right. You know, to do things, to no longer sit back and wait for something to be done Amen. or be wondering when is God going to move on your behalf. You're not going to have to wonder. God has already moved on your yeah. behalf. And all you have to do is be brave enough to do the thing that God has put in your heart to do. Love. It's like when y'all went out there and gave that man a check for uh, earnest money for a $50,000 piece of land. I had that thing. By his remorse. <laughs> I had said. Well, what the? <laughs> because the mind, right? Right. The, the conscious mind is here. Right. But then what happened was the subconscious mind got in there and said, hold on. Oh, wait a minute, what's, wrong? what's going on? Mm -hmm. So the things that you're dreaming. Those are the things you need to go ahead and do, pursue after those things. Right. Don't be sitting around, you know what, I got to wait, God going to give me money. He going to give me the money, he going to bless me because this is what I want to do. And God knows the desires of my heart. God said make a move. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Make a move. Because that's what faith is, making a move. That's right. That's what he said to Joshua. Okay, go. Be brave. Act courageous, but go on. You know, go on. I'm with you. Go on. You know, go on. <laughs> okay? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God. All right. So, it's almost like with the friends, you know what? And this is, I've gotten to this point, and, you know, Felicia is a witness. <laughs> you know, you caught me up with that craziness. I'm like, okay. I say to her because she can handle it. Get off right. my phone. Right. But to somebody, she said it like I did. <laughs> to somebody else, I'd be like, okay, problem, let's pray for your problem. Right. Because <laughs> we're not going to talk about it and give more energy right. Right. To, it. to it. And then the person doesn't realize that because they're not in that vein of what you're trying mm -hmm. to get across to them. Right. So all we can do is pray in your subconscious. Mm -hmm. I mean, pray in your conscious mind. Your conscious. And hope that you allow it to ooze into, into your, your subconscious mind, mind and have an effect on your spirit. Mm. We have to hold in our mind in all its fullness and we should not let go of it for a minute lest the work of demonstration be delayed. Mm. When you retire at night, let your last thought be about the abundance of spiritual substance. Right, See it filling all the house and the minds of all the people in the house. That potent thought will then sink into your subconscious and continue to work whether you are asleep or awake. Mm -hmm. Now what we wind up doing, most of us at the time, you go to bed worrying about bills. Or you go to bed worrying about little Johnny. You go to bed and work. So you're not prospering. You right. can't prosper like that. Okay? Because mm -hmm. you, when you're thinking there and you're relaxing, think about what happens. The subconscious comes to the forefront. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have anything good right. in your subconscious mind, mm -hmm. it's going to play havoc on your sleep. Yeah. Because... Your conscious mind, I'm getting good at this dog on conscious mind. Okay. Your conscious mind is in control while you're awake. Right. But when you sleep, the subconscious mind takes over. Yep. Right. So what you put into the conscious mind shows up in the subconscious mind. And when you go to sleep, the subconscious mind go to run. Right. Run. And when it's a good thing, you start having prophetic dreams. Right. But when it's not, lions is chasing you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Don't <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> start chasing you. Know? I must have ate something wrong. Yeah, that's a, that's a whole 
I'm going to say so. <laughs> Hallelujah. The law of supply is a divine law. Yes, it is. This means that if a law of mine must work through, through mine, God will not go to the grocery store and bring food to your table. But when you continue to think about God as your real supply, mm -hmm. everything in your mind begins to awaken and contact divine substance. Mm. And as you mold it in your consciousness, ideas begin to come which will connect you with the visible manifestation. You first get the ideas in consciousness direct from the divine source. Right. Then you begin to demonstrate in the outer. It is the exact law and is scientific unfailing. First the blade, then the ear, then the full corn or grain in the ear. Here's what happened. I'm in, I want something. I want you to show me something. You got to show me how to do this, Lord. You got I want to get something coming in. The Holy Spirit is going to drop ideas into the first level of your mind. Right. Your conscious mind. And as long as you're awake, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. But when you go to sleep, the subconscious and the fears about how you're going to pull this together, how am I going to do this, all of those things take over yeah. and overpower your, sub your conscious mind because your conscious mind is not in control when you sleep. Right. Your conscious mind is in control when you're awake, but it gets information from your subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. Get good at this subconscious mind. Hallelujah. I got the anointing for the mind. All right. Hallelujah. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so when you work in harmony with this universal law, and this is the point of, you know, understanding, because that's all we want to get is to be about the understanding. Right. Okay, about what God is trying to convey and what he wants to get across. And there's nothing wrong, you know, to shout to the cows, come on, whatever it is. But is that prospering you in God? Is no. that what God wants for you? That after you finish shouting, you can't pay the light bill. Mm. You know, that's not the best. No, it's not. <clears throat> you know, I've been there where... Last thing I had was a box of grits and one piece of bacon. Mm. Oh, yeah. And steady saying, God, you got to do it. God, you got to do it. God, you got to do it. <laughs> God, you got to do it. And you know what God did? Get your book. You do it. Right. You read. You educate yourself. Right. Because God will not do it. You do it. Because it's, it's a... Uh, they always use this word, teach a man to fish. Mm -hmm. He'll eat forever. And he'll eat forever. forever. Feed right? Feed when you him, teach him to fish. Yeah, and that's where all these food banks crop up at, is what they're giving them stuff, and it's a repetitive thing. It's right. a spirit cycle of negativity right. because they're never taught to fish for themselves. Right. I, I don't have, they don't even think about it because the food bank is there to right. feed them. Right. So they don't have to go to God and help me understand how to function in your world. Right. They don't have to do that because they think God is supplying through the food bank. Amen. Right? Through the government. Or the government. Or the food stamps. Yeah. You, you know, don't take me there. Anyway. <laughs> Woo. I'm just about finished, okay? All right. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> your part is simply to fulfill the law. Mm -hmm. This is to work your mind filled with mind substance. And I admonish each and every one of us, including myself, go back over this chapter. Yes. This chapter is yes. profound. It really is. Get this uh, video. Go back over that video with this and go over it and over it and clean out your subconscious. Make the effort and start learning how to clean out that subconscious. That's right. But how do I do that when I lay down? It's not going to be easy at first because your mind going to get to running. It's like running. It's like I have chariots on. running through the running through my on. mind, you know? <laughs> yeah. No, put, the, put it on. Yeah. yeah. Put it on and it'll get in there. Yeah. And block that stuff out. That's why they would always say uh, to listen to those kinds of things. 
in, in your so sleep and at night when you go to sleep yep. because that's supposed to help. Now, I didn't know no better, so what I have on is Cartoon Channel. Because <laughs> I didn't works, know right. that any kind of negativity, or I don't want that on my TV. I don't want Playboy Channel coming through and right. all that stuff that comes on after midnight. So I keep my TV on the Boomerang Channel all the time because that's a safe place to be when I'm asleep. Right. So, anyway, <laughs> you have to do what works for you, okay? But get into the practice of doing because he's going to change your world. For real. He's going to change your world. He's going to change your life. He's going to open up and illuminate stuff for you. Yep. You know? Because you're taking an effort. You, you're making an effort to do it. You could be doing a lot of things on Saturday morning. Sleep. Whatever. You could be finding 50 other things to do. But you chose to be here, to, to hear, to, to learn how to get through. You know? And he's not going to disappoint. No, he know. Hallelujah. Keep losing my spot. Okay, I'm going to start at the top of this again. When you work in harmony with this universal law, every needed thing is abundantly supplied. Yep. Your part is simply to fulfill the law. That is to keep your mind filled with substance. To store up spiritual substance until the mind is filled. Mm -hmm. with it and cannot help but manifest in your affairs in obedience to the law. Whatsoever hath he shall, whatsoever, whosoever has, I'm sorry, to him shall be given. But you are not fulfilling the law when you allow poverty-stricken thoughts to dwell in your mind. All right, no. They draw other like thoughts and your consciousness will have no room for the truth that prosperity is in you. Right. So the truth is, you are a prosperous nation in yourself already. Right. It's not coming from some outward source. Right. It's on the inside of you. My point is, your prosperity is suppressed yeah. within you mm. because we are suitcases full of everything we need when we come here. Amen. Poverty or prosperity, it all depends on you. All that the Father has is yours, but you alone are responsible for the relationship, I highlighted this, of right. the Father's good to your life. Right. Nobody else is responsible. Mm -hmm. You are responsible. Absolutely. Through conscious recognition of your oneness with the Father and His abundance, you draw the living substance into visible supply. Right. You can talk about it till the cows come home. But you can literally exercise this and prosper. Amen. You can prosper. But to think that prosperity is coming from some other place, it's coming from within you. you because it's being suppressed by your subconscious. Right. Don't hesitate to think that prosperity prosperity is for you. So don't not think about it. Right. You know, we had a lot of uh, teachings that took us to the, the edge, but mm. we never did fall off. Uh, it took us to a point, but then how could a whole generation of Christians be taken to the edge and we still don't have a testimony right. of prosper? Right. Then there's something wrong with our theology and don't be afraid to say it. Right. <laughs> don't feel unworthy. Banish all thoughts of being a martyr for poverty. All right, now. Amen. You better say that again. No one enjoys poverty. On, no, they don't. But some people seem to enjoy the sympathy and compassion right. they can excite because of it. Right. Overcome any leaning in that direction and every belief that you are meant to be poor. No one is ever hopeless. Until he is resigned to his imagined fate. Mm. All right, Think girl. prosperity. Talk prosperity. Not in general, but in specific terms. Not as something for the other fellow, but as your very own right. right. 
Deny every appearance of failure. Stand by your guns and affirm supply. What does that mean? That means I have all supply. That means write down the things that you want to start your day with. Write those things down. If you have to literally carry them in your pocket because of a negative thought coming your way, and you have to pull it out in the middle of, excuse me, something just hit me. Then pull it out so you can say what you need to say because I need to get y'all to prosper. Right. I need to see you prosper. I don't need to give you a, a faith message or a grace message. I need you to prosper right here. Right. We don't need to talk about Genesis. We don't need to talk about Moses. We need to talk about money. Mm -hmm. Because then you'll say, tell me about Moses. Tell me, tell me about Genesis. I want to hear everything about God. <laughs> then we'll change your passion. Right. You have that passion to know. Right. <clears throat> Here we go, Felicia. Just hold your gun. <laughs> hold your gun. Hold your gun. <laughs> Just can't oh. hardly get her here. She about to go on. Hallelujah. I got one more sentence. Okay, Felicia. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Deny every appearance of failure. Stand by your guns and affirm supply. Right. Support and success in every face. Let me see, I get it sight. Mm -hmm. Stand yeah. by your guns and affirm supply. Support and success in every face of question and doubt. Then give thanks. Right. Give an offering mm -hmm. for plenty in all your affairs. Mm -hmm. Knowing for a certainty that your good is now being fulfilled in spirit, right. in mind, and in manifestation. You have to release. We talked about last week, we talked about release. You got to release. And then now here's the law we're talking about today is transformation. We're talking about transformation of the mind. Restructuring the mind, but understanding levels of your mind. That first level of mind. And that second level of mind, and how at the moment they may not agree. Right. And your job is to get them to agree. Amen. And to understand that underneath your first and second mind is your prosperity. Right. And you got to speak it out mm -hmm. of you, not coming from some other place. Right. Speak it out of you. You're like a doggone plug in the socket. Think of yourself as the plug. Think of the socket as God's universe. Mm -hmm. And what's going to happen when you stick yourself into the plug of God's universe? All right. What's going to happen? You're going to light up. You're going to illuminate. You're going to be shocking. <laughs> now, hold on to your boots because this is where we're going to go. And we're never coming back no more. <laughs> I know that's right. I know that's okay? We're never coming back. Never, ever, ever. This is what I want you to say from this day forward. Are you hearing me? You ready? Yeah. The Lord is my banker. My credit is good. He makes me lie down in the consciousness of omnipresent abundance. This is the 23rd Psalm, y'all. He gives me the key to his strong box. He restores my faith in his riches. He guides me in the path of prosperity for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the very shadow of death, I shall not fear, mm -hmm. for you are with me. Thy silver and thy gold, they secure me. Thou preparest a way for me in the presence of the collector. Mm -hmm. Thou fillest my wallet with plenty. Hey, yes. My measure running over. Mm -hmm. Surely, goodness and plenty will follow me all the days of my life. And I shall do business in the name of the Lord forever. forever. Now, what you need to do, your assignment, if there is to be one, is to go back over this fourth chapter Amen. again. Amen. This 
23rd Psalm, oh. revised, begin to say that yeah. in your hour of prayer. Mm -hmm. Or whenever it comes to mind. Because it's going to take a while for you to believe it. Right. Because you're saying, saying anyway, okay, nothing's happening. Okay, nothing's happening. But you keep on. And that's the point of it. Because I would, if he was standing here right now, I'd probably slap him. Just for that. Yeah, just for that right there. Just for that. I'm like, when the first thing I looked at, he said, the Lord is my Thank you. I was like, Shut my credit up. is good. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I am no longer in the natural. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> so, you want to do that. Right. Because this is where the things have changed. I want you to understand. Right. Things are changing right here. Mm -hmm. That land where we were at, we're no longer in that land. This right here makes a difference. This changes your direction because now we got to a point, we've traveled the ways, and now we're at a point of going into a land. Yep. In order to go into that land, you I mean, need certain tools. Mm -hmm. And you got those tools. Okay? Amen. And we're going to... Get to where we need to get to. We go. Amen. We're going to get there. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, you know, I'm going to upload that and work through it. Work through it. Go over and go over and say, Jesus, help me. You know, I know some of the wording is, is you know, goes against our brain and our religion and stuff, but get the meat of right. what's being said in here because that is a universal thing right there. And remember, you are the plug that goes into the socket. Amen. That makes the power. Oh, okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this word mm -hmm. that you give to us today. We thank you for changing our direction, motivating us and showing us. We thank you for continuous miracles that are coming in our direction, miracles that we define and understand. We will see them come our way. We thank you for every person, Lord. Yes. Father, I ask continual grace to be upon them. Let our eyes continue to be opened. And this word smack them in the face. Amen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.